how to graph a line from an equation using algebra. In this case, they gave us the equation y equals 5x minus 5. Now, there's a few different ways I could do this. Since my equation is in slope-intercept form, I could use the slope in the y-intercept. But in this case, since they said using algebra, that means that they want us to substitute and plug numbers into our equation. So what I want to do is pick some numbers. And notice that y is by itself. So I want to pick a number I can put in place of x. And then I'm going to work it out in that equation and see what it gives me for y. Now, I am going to be a little bit strategic about what number I pick. I'm not going to pick a number like 100, because if I said 5 times 100 minus 5, that's going to give me a really big number. That's going to be, I can see my graph goes up to about 12 here. I don't want to pick something that's going to go way above that. I also don't want to get, pick something that's going to give me um, a negative below negative 1, because I don't have room on my graph for that. So I'm going to be a little strategic, and I'm going to try to pick some numbers for x that I think are going to give me y answers between negative 1 and 12 to make sure that those points fit on my graph. OK, well, since I see I've got 5x minus 5, I think a good place to start would be with the number 1. And it's also a nice, easy number to work with. So that seems like a really good choice here. So let's substitute 1 in place of x. Now, when you substitute, remember, you're plugging it in for x, and you always have to put parentheses around the number that you're substituting. Now, the reason those parentheses are really important are because the parentheses show us that we have multiplication. If we forgot to use them, it would look like a 51. But it's not. It's a 5 times 1. Remember, 5x is the same thing as 5 times x. So we, we have to remember those parentheses here to know we're multiplying. OK, and now we have to think about order of operations. I would multiply before I would subtract. So we're going to multiply 5 times 1. That gives me 5. And then now I'm able to subtract. 5 minus 5 gives me 0. OK, so I know the ordered pair 1, 0 is on my graph. And it doesn't matter whether you write it in a table or as an ordered pair. This is the same thing as saying the ordered pair 1, 0. It's just written in a table instead of as an ordered pair. The same way that you would graph those coordinates 1, 0, we're going to plot our point 1, 0 here. Remember, the x-coordinate always tells you how far you're going to move to the right or to the left. If it's a positive, you're going to the right. If it was a negative, I would go to the left. Since it's positive 1, I'm going to go 1 to the right. And then the y-coordinate tells you how far you're going to move up or down. If it was a positive, I would move up. If it's a negative, I would move down. In this case, it's a 0, so that's going to tell me to stay in the center. So I'm going to go 1 to the right, and then 0 up or down. So on my graph, we're always starting to count from the origin, which is the point 0, 0. So I'm going to go 1 to the right and 0 up or down. And it also is really important that you look at the units on your graph. Notice, in this case, my graph is going by 1s, right? 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis. Same thing on my y-axis, 1, 2, 3. So since I'm going by 1s, I, I can count this. OK, so I need at least two points to graph a line. And it's nice to have three, because that gives you a double check that all three fall in the same line. So since I started with the number 1, why not substitute 2 next? That's going to be pretty small and easy to work with as well. OK, so I'm going to substitute 2 in place of x. So y is equal to 5. In place of our x, we're putting 2. And remember, we're using those parentheses. And then we have minus 5. Just like before, I'm going to use order of operations and multiply before I subtract. 5 times 2 gives me 10. And then I'm going to subtract 5. So y is equal to 10 minus 5, or y is equal to 5. OK, so if I put in 2, I get 5 out for y, which means the ordered point 
2, 5 is going to be on my graph. So I'm going to go, remember the x-coordinate tells you how many right or left, the y-coordinate is how many up or down. So I'm going to go 2 to the right and then up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so my, my line is already drawn in here. I could stop there if I wanted to. If you wanted to double check, you could always substitute one more point and make sure that it falls right on your line. But that is optional. In this case, since our line is drawn in, let's say that we've got our line. Graph this function using algebra, y equals 1x minus 1. Okay, so just like we did before, we're going to use our equation. And we're going to substitute some numbers in for x and see what we get for y, because that's going to give us points that we can plot. So you can pick any numbers you want. Again, trying to be a little bit strategic, so we pick numbers that fall on our graph. And I always really like to use numbers like 0 and 1, if I can, because they're really nice and easy to work with. So I think in this case, I'm going to start with 0, because if I plug 0 in place of x, I'm going to say 1 times 0 minus 1. And that's nice and easy to work with, because 1 times 0 is just 0. And then 0 minus 1 gives me negative 1. So I know the first coordinate is going to be 0, negative 1. Now, one thing that's worth pointing out here is that I already know 0, negative 1 is on this graph, right? So 0 right or left, 1 down. And the reason I say that is because if you look at this equation, it is in slope-intercept form. And remember that number at the end, the b value, is always representing our y-intercept. So that's confirmation to me, since I see negative 1 in this equation in place of my y-intercept, that 0, negative 1 is a point on my graph. Okay, next, let's try picking another easy number to plug in. Now, you could use 1, you could use 2. It doesn't really matter. Pick a number that you want to substitute into your equation. In this case, I'm going to substitute 2 in place of x. So 1 times, instead of x, we're putting our 2 in parentheses, minus 1. Now, from here, I'm going to multiply before I subtract. 1 times 2 gives me 2. And then 2 minus 1 gives me 1. So I know the ordered pair, 2, 1, is also on my graph. And again, you could keep going and you could get more points, but 2 is the minimum you need to graph your line. So I'm going to plot my point 2, 1. So 2, 1 is going to go 2 to the right and up 1. Graph this function using algebra, y equals negative 2 and a half x plus 25. Okay, so since I'm going to be substituting numbers into my graph, or into my equation here, I want to rewrite this equation. And for me, since I know from the past few problems already that I'm going to have to multiply the number that I'm subbing in for x times the number in front, it's going to be a little easier for me to do that multiplication if I write negative 2 and a half as an improper fraction instead of a mixed number. So the easiest way to, to switch this or convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction is to take the whole number in front, my whole number in front is negative 2, multiply it by the denominator, or the bottom number, so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and then you add the numerator or top number. In this case it's a negative, so we're going to subtract that top number. 
and then it keeps whatever the same denominator was. And then to simplify this out, instead of saying negative 4 minus 1, I'm going to say negative 5 over 2. And you can always, as a double check, if you're not sure when you do the conversion from the mixed number to an improper fraction, you can take your calculator as a double check. You can plug it in. You can say negative 5 divided by 2 gives me negative 2.5. And you can tell that that's the same thing as negative 2 and a half, since 1 half is 0.5. So when in doubt, you can always use that calculator to make sure your numbers match when you plug it in and say, okay, yes, they do give me the same decimal. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. Instead of negative 2 and a half, I'm going to say negative 5 over 2 just to make my multiplication easy by hand here. x plus 25. Just like before, I'm going to plug in some numbers for x and see what answers they give me for y to make my ordered pairs. Now, in this case, I'm going to be strategic again because I want numbers that I can put on this graph. So I want x values and y values in between negative 1 and positive 12, right? Since I see my graph goes down to negative 1 and up to 12 on the y-axis. And same thing on the x. It starts at negative 1 and goes to 12. So I'm going to think here for a second. And I'm probably going to have to pick some larger numbers because I'm going to have to get a negative answer and then add 25 to it. And I want that number to land me somewhere between 0 and 10 seems like a good area where I have most of my graph. So just thinking here for a second, maybe a number around 10 might work well. And you can kind of do some quick mental math to see. Or you can just plug it in and see what happens. So let's, let's try 10 and then we'll adjust from there. So I'm going to substitute 10 in place of x. Now to make my math easy just like I did before, I'm going to write 10 as a fraction. 10 is the same thing as 10 over 1. And of course, depending if you're allowed to use a calculator, if your teacher said that's okay, you can multiply this out with a calculator. I'm going to show you how to do it here by hand as well. When you multiply the fraction by a fraction, you go straight across the numerator and straight across the denominator. Now that negative, you can group it with the top or the bottom. I'm going to group it with the top. So negative 5 times 10 gives me negative 50 on the top of my fraction or the numerator. And on the bottom, or the denominator, 2 times 1 gives me 2. And then I still need to add 25 to that. Now remember, fractions mean the same thing as division. So negative 50 divided by 2 would be negative 25. So in this case, I wind up with negative 25 plus 25, which gives me 0. So I know one of the points on my graph is going to be the point 10, 0. Let's graph that. So that's going to be 10 to the right and 0 up or down. So when I pick my next number, I'm again going to try to be a little bit strategic to give myself something that's going to be easy to plot. I know when I get to the fraction part, I'm going to have to divide it by 2. So I want to pick something that's going to give me an even number, so it's going to be nice and easy to divide by 2. And again, I want something that's going to be not too much bigger than 10, because I want to make sure that it still fits on my graph. So maybe I'm going to skip 11 since that's going to be odd and it's going to give me a decimal number. Let's go to 12. 
So when I substitute 12 in place of x, we're going to say y is equal to, now we know our fraction was already negative 5 over 2. In place of x, we're going to substitute 12. And then we have plus 25. To work this out, I'm going to write my 12 as 12 over 1. And then we're going to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom of my fraction. And again, that negative that you have in front, you could group it with the 5 or the 2. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep it on the top here just to be consistent. So negative 5 times 12 is going to give me negative 60. On the bottom or the denominator, 2 times 1 is going to give me 2. And then I'm going to still have to add that 25. Okay, when we're doing order of operations, fractions are the same as division, so that's going to happen before my addition. So negative 60 over 2, or negative 60 divided by 2, is going to give me negative 30 And then I'm going to add 25 to that. Negative 5. Okay, so this might not have been the best point for us to use, actually, but I'm, I'm glad we did this because you can see that there is going to be a little bit of trial and error here because you're trying to find points that are going to fit on our graph, and 12, negative 5 would be down here somewhere. So if picking a bigger number didn't work, we're going to try to go the other way and say, well, what should we have done? We should have picked something a little smaller than 10. And that's because we had that negative out front. So let's say instead of picking anything bigger, let's go a little smaller than 10. Let's maybe go to 8. All right, and I'm going to substitute one more time. I'm going to just have to find a little bit of room here. Let's say we're going to just work this out over here. So y is equal to negative 5 over 2. In place of x, we're substituting 8. And then we're adding 25. Writing my 8 as a fraction is 8 over 1. I'm going to group that negative on the top of this fraction. And then multiplying straight across the top, negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. Multiplying straight across the bottom, 2 times 1 is 2. And then we've got to still add our 25. So negative, this is a little hard to see. I'm just going to, I'll rewrite it here for you since it's getting cut off. We have y equals negative 40 over 2 plus 25. And remember, fractions are division. So negative 40 divided by 2 gives us negative 20. And then we still have to add 25 to that. So negative 20 plus 25 is going to give us 5. Okay, and this is good because 8, 5 is something that is going to fit nicely into our graph. We're going to go 8 to the right and up 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the right, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we can draw in our line. 